Hello, welcome everyone to today's webinar on demystifying GitOps with Kubernetes and beyond it. Uh, my name is Tatiana Fedenichik, uh, Director of Global Product Marketing at Virtuosa. And before moving on with this topic, uh, I just want to mention that so we would really like to hear your questions uh, to have a productive discussion. So please don't hesitate to use the questions tab or a chat during our conversation. Also, the session is going to be recorded, so you will get the link afterwards. So we are thrilled to have you join us uh, as we dive into the world of GitOps. And uh, uh, we can go to the agenda. Um, this concept of GitOps has gained significant traction in recent years and uh, is often closely associated with managing <coughs> Kubernetes environments. However, in today's session, we are not going to stop only on that, but broaden our perspective to show you that GitOps is not exclusively uh, to Kubernetes. And it's a powerful paradigm that can be applied to various aspects of uh, software development and infrastructure management. And uh, to help us better understand GitOps best practices and benefits, we have a special guest, founder and CEO of our Swiss partner, Hedora, Matthew Robin. Matthew, please share a few words of your connection to DevOps world and uh, yeah. GitOps concept in general. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Tatiana, for the welcoming and the introduction. I would like to be very happy to share a bit about what uh, GitHub is and how we can maintain it and how we can use it during the, the system and the automation and the DevOps philosophy. Let's discuss about the agenda for today. Uh, I will discuss about the culture of the DevOps and the philosophy. We will go deeply in the DevOps, uh, what is the DevOps and the GitOps, of course, and what can DevOps, uh, GitOps can bring to us. And then we will be uh, a bit more technical to go to the practice and demonstration, GitOps on Kubernetes and GitOps on Virtuoso application platform. And then, of course, there is a lot of uh, question and answer will be open. If you have any things to say, let me know. Um, I will try to make uh, just a, a small introduction of who I am. I just have a small beer now, but I'm the founder and the CEO of Idora. Uh, we are a cloud provider in Switzerland, and I'm in the same time the founder of the DevOps Days Geneva and the Meetup DevOps in Geneva. I, I'm in the DevOps philosophy since now seven years, something like that. And I'm very oriented about the satisfaction of customer employees and of course the business. That's the point about the, uh, the, the DevOps philosophy. Let me explain a bit what Idora do. We do infrastructure as a service with Linux, Windows, uh, virtual machine. We do platform as a service based on the um, Virtuoso application platform. And of course, Kubernetes and Docker as a service. We have two data centers in Switzerland in the control of Vo and Geneva. And of course, our data center are ISO 27001, ISO, etc. A lot of certification about this. This is what we do at the cloud platform. Then we saw that a lot of people would like to move to the DevOps culture or the container culture and the culture of the uh, all the technical points of the DevOps and Kubernetes and container, Docker, etc. So we do uh, consulting services for the DevOps. Uh, philosophy and tools. And then we do managed services on top of our infrastructure or either on premise and of course support and assistance. We have some uh, other tools we like to use. Uh, I let you the, see the, the, the logo of them. I think you already know a lot of them. Um, I just would like to, spare, to share a small story time uh, because it's in many, many experience we had with company we always see this kind of problem. The, the ideas could be on the small company like startup with three, five developers and a CTO, and they want to do everything, but unfortunately there is a lot of problem in terms of infrastructure or deployment. And then in big company where there is multiple team, multiple uh, developer teams, uh, infrastructure teams, and of course, a lot of cloud uh, platform and yes, a lot of mess in terms of, uh, of things. So. The idea is say, okay, we need to make a change, how we can do it 
easily. So that's one of the points, how we can make change in terms of infrastructure or in terms of development, in terms of application. Yes, this is the first way. We need to recreate a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. We have the problem is gone. So we need to change it. This is fine. We are on the problem, but we can maintain it because we have Terraform. Terraform is the solution. We just need to relaunch the cluster. Yes, let's start with the pipeline. So we have the pipeline. Mm, yes, but the team changed everything. So we don't have the pipeline. This is what we have uh, a continuous problem and uh, the CI CD doesn't solve everything. We need to change the philosophy how we can build a world infrastructure as code, a world deployment and application uh, as code. This is one of the points about the GitOps and the, uh, the DevOps philosophy. What's the DevOps say? Because we, I think you follow a lot of uh, blog and so a lot of uh, newspaper about the DevOps, but one of the point DevOps is not a tool, it's not a job, it's the philosophy and the culture for the business. I let you read this sentence. The, this, uh, this description is made by Amazon Web Services. And I think this is one of the best DevOps description uh, we can find on internet. The idea is, is to say we will put tools and philosophy and everything we can do with uh, tools, team, communication to improve the process and speed up the uh, the quality and the service we can provide for the market. This is one of the points. So to be very oriented to the customer and the quality of the solution. When I mean quality, I say automation, I say security, I say everything, in fact. Because when we spoke about automation, we are human. If I didn't sleep yesterday correctly, on the morning, I don't have the same quality of job I will do if I compare to the day before. And this is of the point. We are human, we have sensation, feeling, and we need to do, we cannot be repetitive tasks for deploying or coding or whatever. So that's the reason we try to move to the DevOps philosophy and the automation to ask machine server tools to do the job for us. This is one of the points. In this point, we will are focused on CI and CD. We are focused on pipeline. We are focused on IPI. And then, of course, with the GitHub philosophy, infrastructure as code. This is a, one of the points that automation will help us to do repetitive tasks without losing something. Or if we are not in the good mood, the machine will continue to do the same things. This is one of the DevOps key points. The same philosophy is the quality. If I'm not in the mood, I didn't, I can change everything because I'm rooting the server and I can, of course, make IT outage because I changed some things. 60% of IT outage are due to unexpected configuration. Let's take about an example. You are a support team, one of our sysadmin team. You do a, a change on your server one hour before leaving your job. You do the change, everything works. You leave to home, you're not on duty. And during the night, there isn't a problem on the server. The super on duty doesn't know what you did. So they're not able to do the history of your modification. You didn't do the documentation, so we have no proof of what you do to make a rollback. That's one of the problems about the DevOps philosophy we write everything and we code everything, and then we have the history of what we do on the server. The job of the sysadmin will change. We not connect to the server in root. We do everything from Git. This is one of the points that we will discuss where we plan to code everything. One another point is the distraction. When you are system administrator, system, system administrator you receive email, notification, alerting on the system. So when you make a deployment, you are not focused on your job. You have a lot of things uh, disturb you. And one of the points that you cannot deploy as soon as possible that the business needs. So if you have a pipeline, if you have a CI CD, you can ask the machine to do it for you. And you can take care about your mails or notification or Teams or whatever. This is a, of the point about the GitOps philosophy and the DevOps philosophy 
to let the machine do and be focused on what you have an added value. Making the script, doing the code, and make infrastructure resilient and with high quality. And many of the problems that you probably know that it works in dev, it's not my problem. You have to manage you have to maintain it and uh, uh, operate it on production. This is one of the points of the DevOps philosophy that means dev and ops works together to have the same infrastructure and the same problem from the dev to the production with the QA and, and um, pre-prod and testing environments. This is of the one of the points. How we can solve it? We can solve this problem by code everything. Coding application, we do it, we did we did it since many, many years. Doing the code for infrastructure is quite a bit new coming from the cloud platform like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, uh, major cloud platform. This is the best way to do infrastructure. So I describe what I want and I have. Of course, today we can do like actor on-premise, IPRV, VMware, and a lot of other platform to do it on site and we can do the code of everything. If when I spoke about infrastructure, I spoke in the same time about firewalling, routing, switching, we can maintain and change the, 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 the configuration by API. And this is one of the points we will plan to do everything on Git and then we push the API to the, the devices we would like to change that could be the VMware, that could be your um, roots, that could be your uh, firewall or whatever whatever you want. This is one of the points in this uh, picture, code everything. This is uh, another point that you have a single source of truth, you have a, a single source of history, and you know who change what and when. So you can make a rollback of the configuration and say, okay, this guy changed the firewall. Each, his change have another problem or an impact in another application. So we can make a rollback. So it's easily to for the support team to make a, a deep analysis of what's the change. If you do it manually, there is no history. And that's one of the points. What the GitOps can bring and what is it? So the idea is to have an entire system describe it declar declaratively. Sorry for my English. The idea is to say, I want these states, I write it in Git, and that's all. I don't want to take care how it is need to be pushed in the system. Everything could be on Git, of course. And then we have the GitHub philosophy, the Git philosophy that with the merge request and all of this to have approval changes. So if I want to make changes, my team or my colleague can check what I want to change and approve my change. So it's more um, horizontal, riskly, uh, take, uh, take care of the risk of what we would like to change. And then of course, we need to have some things to make sure that what it's right on Git, it's everything on the devices or cloud or whatever. What the GitOps can do for me. When I have everything on Git, I can, of course, increase the productivity because all the small change will be done by Git and then the pipeline will run. So in terms of time, in terms of risk, in terms of uh, disrup um, disruption, it's very better. And then the developer can have an impact on the infrastructure. I need more replica. I need uh, to open the firewall. We can give them the opportunity to make the change on the infrastructure, small change, of course. And then, of course, when you did that, you improve the stability because you have a state. You know exactly what the infrastructure is because there is a state list. It's like a receipt in the in the, in the kitchen. This is something you did. And of course, a reliability, it's more about infrastructure, but if you have all your infrastructure described on Git, you can uh, do it again on another cloud platform, on another Kubernetes cluster, on another virtual application platform, because you have just to replay the job, change your API, and that's all. And of course, in terms of audits, you have something consistent and standard. That's the best way to say, 
okay, when I deploy an application, so I need this virtual machine, this database with the best optimization. So in terms of quality is better and in standard, you have something homogeneous. When you have something homogeneous, you have time to put security. So all your CVE can be changed and be, uh, be secured directly on your code. And of course, you need to test it. You can test it because you have just to redeploy your application on the development or testing of the uh, environment. And then you can change the security and approve this for the production later. And of course, for the compliance and auditing, that's everything is right. There is no need to have uh, uh, to ask the guy because the guy have to work on Git and that's all. So let's discuss about the GitOps in terms of what we can put on it. So on this slide, you will see the application code. So the developer side, you will have the infrastructure definition and the application on this infrastructure. Everything on Git, you have to build in terms of application, Java, Go, whatever you want. You need to build, of course, you have the Docker. So you have to the repository of your application with, of course, the, re the, the release management, the versioning of your application. And you will do the same on Git. You know, when you have a main update of the Postgre or database, you need to set it which version you would like to use on your Git. And that if you need to make an upgrade, you have just to change the, the version of your Postgre and make, of course, all chain on your application. But what I mean that it's easy to see on which application you are. And if you need to apply some patches or hotfix or whatever, it's easy to maintain. It's quite easier. And then, of course, you have your GitOps tools to make the change on your Kubernetes cluster, on your cluster to see, OK, I have a declaration of what I want. I need to make sure that my infrastructure is really the same. And there are some Git tools to do it. GitOps tools, sorry. Unfortunately, when you see on Google or GitOps, the answer is Kubernetes or a lot of things to do. But it's great, but it's not the only answer. The GitOps is a philosophy to say everything on Git, source of truth, and then I can pilote and maintain and manage and operate all my infrastructure. So this is why uh, we would like to, to just to play tonight a bit. I don't know if everybody is aware about what is Kubernetes, but a Kubernetes, it's a control, container orchestration. It's like you use, you have to declare what you would like to have in terms of application and container based on document of the time, and then you can use it and, de and deploy it. You have the ability to have uh, high scalability, load balancing on your cluster without any problem. And then you can deploy your application and sell hailing what you want in terms of worker, in terms of pod or services, etc. So that's quite easy to make some things very relevant and high ability. And then you have the discovery of the services and networking, so it's quite easy to make a high scalability application. Of course, Kubernetes was made for the DevOps philosophy and for the GitOps philosophy, let's say something like that. So everything is in declaration mode and you can declare your configuration, how you would like your infrastructure, how many replica, replica you would like to have, how you will open which port, your network policy, your everything you can declare it directly from Git and I apply it directly on your Kubernetes cluster. That's what we can do with Kubernetes and it's quite a small, uh, very small um, explanation of what is Kubernetes. So let's compare Kubernetes to VMware cluster. You have some things to maintain and to uh, operate your virtual machine. This is quite similar to the Docker uh, world uh, with maybe a little bit more about scaling and higher ability. When you plan to do this, you need some things to make the link between your Git and your Kubernetes cluster. So there are some tools like Flux to keep your Kubernetes configuration cluster synchronized to, uh, to your Git to make sure that everything is connected and it is in a state of what you want. That's the best way to say, okay, I make a change on Git. A few seconds later, it will be applied on the, uh, my Kubernetes cluster. I just would like to talk about these tools. Another good tool is not is the Argo CD. This is the same things. So you declare it, you see the change, you sync the change, and then 
it will make sure that everything is uh, applied on Kubernetes. One of the points of our GCD is that you can see your Kubernetes, the status of your Kubernetes and the synchronization. It's quite easy to use and very uh, with a really uh, nice uh, web to, uh, web drive. Let's start with a demonstration of this uh, of this tool. So there is two um, two demonstration. One is the easy way. So you just you'd, you use kubectl uh, apply. kubectl is the API the CLI sorry to apply your configuration directly for to your Kubernetes. Let me show you how it works a bit. So I have just a GitLab and here I have my Kubernetes file. So a deployment, an ingress, and the services. And then I have my CI to say, okay, my CI is quite very, very simple. I just make a kube apply or of my old file in my folder kube file. So what I would like to show you is to say, okay, I will change the kube file to change my, I think the demonstration is here. Let's change the message, I just need to do this. This is my message for the this webinar. I just commit. Of course, you can do it with a virtual, uh, Visual Studio code. You can do what you want, it's quite easy. When I did that, my GitLab will do the pipeline automatically. So I just not, don't need to touch everything. I just need to see my pipeline and my pipeline is running. That means it will apply my new deployment YAML file directly to the Kubernetes cluster. Oh, it's already done, I'm sorry. So normally if I go here, I have my new message. You see how it's fast, you see how is it easy. I just need to maintain my get correctly and then I pipeline do the, the things for Kubernetes. This is one of the way, but it's not the treacherous way. Another way is to do Argo CD. Argo CD is these tools who keep the synchronization with the Kubernetes. So I have my Kubernetes is with my two pods of my hello world. I will sync just before synchronize my Git to my deployment. Okay, sync. Now I will change the same way the number of replicas. So I will change my infrastructure in this case. I'm not more, not anymore my application, but my infrastructure. Let's go to deployment, edit the file another time. And then I would just change this to four. Oh, sorry, I just did a mistake. If I did that, my kubectl apply will change to, so let me just uh, hop, hop. I just need to do this. Um, I'm sorry for this history. That's the way I just change. Manual, I will not launch automatically my CI. Edit, yeah. I changed my CI to not apply the kubectl file. Okay. Now I can change my application, so my Kubernetes configuration file, to say I want to run not in two replica, but in two, in four replica, my hello world. When I commit, I will have my Arco CD, I just need to sync. Of course, we can do uh, automatization of uh, automating synchronization, but for the demonstration, it's quite easy to do it manually. It's syncing, and now it's preparing my four replica. So I'm changing my infrastructure, my high ability of my hello world in a few seconds. This is quite easy to do it. And you can, of course, it's quite a very, very simple uh, demonstration, but you can maintain all your Kubernetes directly from your Git by this way. And that's quite easy to do. And of course, my application didn't change. This is one of the first and second demonstration, but when you do it on Kubernetes, you can do what you want with this kind of uh, tools. So that's a, a, a good way. Let's continue to the, the, the presentation. Of course, if you have any question, you can continue. Words, uh, words you like can, a charm. 
Matthew, that works. Let's say something like that's, this. That's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's exactly, give a exactly. possibility to, for people to remind uh, about the questions. So feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we will be answering them at the end of the webinar. So don't forget to do that. Uh, yeah, and so far you see how easy it looks, but behind that goes a pretty huge work of those who created those applications and the platforms and so on and so forth. To, to make this magic happen. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, let's continue because it's great. You can do it on Kubernetes, but Kubernetes, it's a bit hard to maintain. So it's a big step and a big change for company to want to, to, to move to the, uh, let's say, uh, VM world to Docker. Kubernetes is a big step because it's quite a change, lot of change for the for company. Yeah, it's a, it's a great tool, but uh, it doesn't suit every project possible. In exactly. This so there are different cases for sure. Exactly. And that's the, one of the reasons when I created Idora, I don't want to go to Kubernetes because it was a bit complicated for people who doesn't know infrastructure, infrastructure as code, doesn't have the DevOps uh, philosophy, and do everything by get. So there is a middle between virtual machine and very complex Kubernetes. There's a platform as a service uh, provided by virtuoso application platform. This is one of the point of when uh, you do a virtuoso application platform, when you use this kind of service, you can do Docker as a service. So you bring your own Docker image or you can do the platform as a service. That means it's a container based on template as you see on the image, it's, for example, I select a Node.js in version 16.20, etc. It's a template. So I just need to power up this container and put my application on it. So I don't need to provide my Docker image in this case. I just need to provide my code. And you can const, uh, build your application like this. For example, the, the, the green square, the green square is a load balancer. Then I have my application uh, layer, my database layer uh, with my ADB, and my cache with my cache. And with this kind of interface, for somebody who doesn't know how it works, uh, Docker Swarm, Docker Compose, or Kubernetes cluster, this kind of interface is quite easy to make something very, very reliable because you have the vertical scaling for the peak of charge and the horizontal scaling for uh, reliability. And that's very easy to just, okay, I just need to click on the plus, I have more replica. That's great because it's really easy to use for, let's say some developer without any information in terms of infrastructure. But if you would like to go deeply on this, there is many tools to do with the application platform. They have API, they have a CLI, and they have the web UI. So you can do everything you see in this interface with API and CLI. Another point is that they have their own infrastructure as code called cloud scripting. I will show you a bit more about this, but it's really easy to use because it's like Kubernetes, you declare what you want and the tools application platform will apply. it. So if we discuss about cloud scripting, you describe your infrastructure, you describe which software you would like to deploy, and then just apply. It's quite easy. So for this example, it's just an area world with a node. I want uh, Apache. I want Cloudlet. Cloudlet is the um, unit of uh, resources, CPU and memory on the virtuoso application platform world. Uh, it's quite easy to understand. And then I just would like to deploy my archive. So I just take up my zip. Quite easy. So in 10 line, maybe less, you have an application deployed on the cloud how you would like to do it. So if you would like to change the number of cloudlet, you need to change, you have just change on your Git and apply. And then it's going to the to the to the virtual application platform. Uh, let's say Idora for the for the example. And then if you are not in the infrastructure as code and in this way, you have the deployment manager. You create your infrastructure with the web UI, and then you connect your Git directly to the web UI and you pull your code when you want. So you make a change on your Git, just update it, update from my Git. And it's quite easy to do it. And it's uh, you can, of course, make uh, pre-hook, post-hook. So before your deployment, after your deployment, you can make, a, you have a strategy when you have multiple replication. 
if you would like to have a simultaneous deployment or sequential with delay between the then. And of course, you can make uh, an auto deploy update every X minutes and uh, auto resolve conflict. That means you manage the conflict on the Git and you have the zero downtime deployment. It's uh, an aliases of the folder when you deploy and it's really zero downtime deployment. A lot of people doesn't think about this, but when you would like to prepare something in production, the zero downtime deployment is really easy because you can make your update and make a rollback if you need. It's quite really easy to use. And then you have another point that you create your infrastructure, you connect your repo git like before, but you, you add a small tool called, uh, it's, a, it's an add-on, git push deploy. Each time you make something change on git, that will, the, the, the add-on will check the difference with your git and the application, and then it will do uh, the difference and application and apply the modification, sorry, on the infrastructure. So you make the, the push, your Git or GitLab or GitHub or whatever, and then you have a webhook to the deploy on your application. And that's quite very easy to use. And then you don't need to touch your uh, providing, your, your provider, sorry, your uh, cloud platform. You have just to work on your Git and your application and deploy. So we have something very strong on that. Let, uh, let's go to the demonstration. I think it's quite easier for that to understand how it works. So I prepared a small, Infrastructure as code is quite the same similar. So I have the declaration of I want a SSL, I want a node, a PHE, just just one node. I don't want a replica. And then number of cloudlets, minimum and the maximum, and that's all. I just want to change, let's say something like change to 32 cloudlets. So I change the CPU and memory huh, in terms of infrastructure level. And here, I still have a pipeline doing the job to create, oops, I need to start it. I need to start it. And then the my CI CD will create the infrastructure from the manifest. And then we will see in few minutes, the application, Hop, it's already in creation. So I'm here on the Idora Cloud Platform and I'm already creating, installing my demonstration pages. So what I created just right now. And we will see that the cloudlet is 32. Um, and you will see that the, the, the real advantage that I just use the Git, I don't do anything. So I'm like a coder or programmer, and then it's applying directly on my cloud platform. This is the cloud scripting demonstration. We need to wait a bit that's doing the job. But if I go um, to the other deployment manager, I just need to show you. Um, I don't remember if I did it here. No, my deployment manager is here. If I want to change my application, so my small website from this page, I just need on my Git change the uh, the index HTML and make the update. So if I change here, here, the deployment manager demonstration for the webinar, I just commit the change. But here I don't have CICD. So I just make the change, but now I need to ask my cloud provider to update the kit. So I, I need to ask my infrastructure take the new uh, application. But I need just one second, guys, uh, because I don't have the good uh, web browser for that. So we can continue. While, while, you're, make, while you're making the uh, updates, there we had a question in uh, the chat about the cloudlets. Uh, the question was uh, whether cloudlets uh, uh, have the ability to change the amount of processor resources or is it solely for memory configuration? So um, I responded in a written form, but I guess we can uh, give a bit more highlights on that uh, as well, like what is cloudlet itself? Uh, it is a combination of both memory and CPU. Uh, it's like 128 uh, megabytes of RAM and 400 megahertz of CPU. And the reason behind uh, uh, this uh, 
uh, resource unit is to make the scaling step pretty small. Uh, so when the customers are consuming uh, like resources, they don't need to uh, to reserve a big chunk of resources. They don't need to buy full VM to run something. They are just uh, consuming the resources. The, the load is going. The system provides these uh, resources with small chunks and takes them back when they are not needed. And uh, the clients, the customers, they are paying specifically only for really consumed uh, the, uh, resources on the platform, but not for reserving them the big chunks uh, beforehand. Thank you so much, Tatiana. During this time, we can see that the level maximum of the cloud that have changed to 32 and the application was created and the environment was created. So that means we have now uh, our Apache server in the good version, how we want with the good cloudlet we, we ask, so the 32. But as uh, Tatiana explained, we only now consume one cloudlet. So this is the minimum of the usage of the application to have 33 megabytes of memory used. And if we need to, if we have a lot of customer uh, going to this website, for example, he will consume more cloudlet and we will see that the consumption of course, we have a, a, statistic, a statistic tools to see uh, the, the monitoring of the application, of course. Let's go to my, uh, sorry, because it was on another account, my demo Eudora account. And I need, uh, if I go here, I still have my deployment manager demonstration. But on this application, I connect my, uh, let's, I connect my get to um to this one, this deployment manager here for the demonstration. So if I go here and say okay, update from get, I just need to click update. Of course, you can take time. It's done. If I just did a refresh, I did the refresh. So I have the information I changed on my application directly on the demonstration. Magic happens. That's the first one. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that makes happen, of course. And another one, demonstration, or let's close this one. And I would like to show you the um, uh, git push directly. And for the git push, uh, let me just, uh, git push, let me change, ah, is this one. We change, we need to, we, we are here with the server GS. We have the hello world, mm, it's not this one. Let me, uh, where is my hello world? Yeah, so, oh, oh. Mm. Ah, this is one of my tests I didn't. Ah, it's here, yeah, it's launching. So for example, when you are in demonstration mode, uh, a virtual application platform can put your environments if you want of this in the settings in sleeping, that means you don't pay for that. And for example, on demonstration development, you can stop your environment during the night and during the weekend. You don't pay for resources except storage and the public IP. And then you can wake up it when you want. And this is one of the points you can make a very, very big effort in terms of your uh, cache usage. For example, we, we make the calculation that you a few years ago. If we start on your application on 8 to uh, 18 during the days and stop during the night and the weekend, the reduction is 67% of uh, full usage. That's a, a lot. So I just start my git push, so not this one, this one. So if, here, if I open here, I have my hello world. Let's share the screen correctly. So if I change my hello world here, Commit the change. There is no pipeline here. This is the same way, no pipeline. The virtual application platform will pick up directly the new application. So maybe we need to wait a bit because it's not so fast. It can take a few minutes, but a few minutes or two more time. Oh, it's done. So less than one minute, <laughs> less than one minute. So that's, that's some things we can do with the GitOps philosophy on the virtual application platform. 
You can modify your infrastructure, you can modify your firewall, your web application platform, you can modify your public IP, you can do what you want directly with the cloud scripting, the CLI, the IPI. Let me show you uh, all what you can do with the IPI. You have uh, all the IPI you can maintain to uh, you, your billing, your environment, your deployment. You can do very, very everything. That's very uh, useful to maintain, manage your infrastructure directly from your Git to your uh, cloud provider. This is something that's really interesting. So I think I finished for the demonstration. Let me come back to this point. Up. We did the free demonstration. Yeah, we did it. Okay, perfect. Without any problem. If you have any question, I will be yep, very happy have... to answer. And uh, let me know. Yeah, we have some questions. So first of all, we have a question uh, uh, about Cloudlets again. Due to our applications requirements, we need to be able to customize and or change the processor settings. So uh, the specs of the Cloudlet scaling setting of 128 megabyte of RAM and 400 megahertz static, or can they ch can they be changed in any way? Mm -hmm. So I can maybe start answering here. They can be changed. This is customizable, but this can be changed more on the level of the service provider or like uh, more on the level of uh, private cloud installation. If you have like your own installation of Virtual's application platform, same as Kedora, uh, you as an admin of the cluster itself, you can change and customize this. Also, if you're the end customer, um, most likely, uh, uh, like Fedora is a provider and is a manager of all its cluster. They can uh, uh, set up, like, change the maximum scaling limit. So if you need to scale maximally, not only to 400, but more, uh, the uh, this uh, not 400, but I mean to not only to the maximum limit that is right now available within the platform, but to the more. Um, Matthew and the team, they can do that from the admin panel and to cover that. Uh, do you have yeah, but to add? Le let me just uh, give my experience on this. Uh, in fact, the Cloudless is just a unit. You have the resources for your application. So you don't need to ask. It's not like Droplet on uh, DigitalOcean. It's not like Heroku. It's very, it's just a unit of uh, billing system. So more uh, less your cloudlet is small, like 128 and 400 megahertz, less your granularity is high, well, more your granularity is high. So if your application, for example, static file, a static website, static application, doesn't consume a lot of uh, CPU and memory, more your cloudlet is small, less you will pay because it doesn't consume a lot of cloudlet, just maybe, maybe just one. And that's the one of the points. But, but if you reduce too much, it's very difficult to explain the the number of cloud that you are using. So it's it's a bit uh, tricky. But I think 400 megahertz and 128 megabytes. It's uh, yes megabytes. It's really interesting in terms of uh, very small application and very high because we have some customer with very big application, BI, ERP, etc and use a virtual application platform on, on Edora. And they are very happy because, for example, during the months, they don't do a lot on their ERP. So they, there is maybe 100, uh, 100 cloud that used. But during the reporting at the end of the month, or when they have a report, they can scale vertically until 200 or 300 cloud let, and then they have the power under the, the application without restart. And this is one of the points compared to other cloud providers that you have the power directly when you want. You have just to make your limit. So this is the 32 cloud that I, I, I changed uh, uh, before that you put directly how you would like to have in resources under your application. Perfect, yep. Uh, great, Ricky says that this answers the question. So that's great. Uh, yeah, we have one more question, rather important question. Uh, um, Zohar is asking to explain what is the relationship between Fedora and Virtuoso? 
Uh, so yeah, okay. we have like <laughs> pretty, pretty long relationship. Good question. <laughs> yeah, good, good question. Good question. Uh, can I answer? Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, sure, okay. sure. You go, go ahead. I so, will add something if needed. Yeah. Virtuoso is a, it's a, uh, an editor of software. They do the software like VMware, but they don't host the platform. They don't, they, they doesn't have the server. We are the local provider, local, let's say European provider with, so we have our own server, storage, firewall, networking, etc. We have installed Virtuoso application, application server on our server. And then the web UI is open to our customer. So that means Virtuoso application platform is our third level of support in terms of orchestration, in terms of hypervisor, but we have our own server and our own support to help you to deploy your application or maintain your application on our platform. So we are the cloud provider in terms of physical data and they are the software uh, editor. Is it right? Yeah. Yes, I'm right. Yes, sure, <laughs> sure. You're you're working with us. You're offering our platform on top of your infrastructure to customers yeah. for the last almost seven years. So yeah, <laughs> you no, definitely know know what is happening here. <laughs> uh, yeah, in general, Virtuosa is uh, a highly uh, targeting um, service providers uh, like uh, like Fedora, um, managed service providers, hosting service providers, cloud service providers, because uh, we are kind of enabler for cloud business. We built our software, our platform for cloud management, and uh, we don't have our own data centers and we don't plan to do like that uh, in the near future at least. Uh, but we work with local service providers around the world and we have covered uh, around 80 countries, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where local service providers, they install, yes, our platform on top and they offer our platform to the people there and they provide managed services sometimes. Sometimes this is just usual cloud um cloud services uh, as is because the platform itself is self-explanatory in some cases and uh, uh, pretty automated uh, for customers some customers require more managed uh, help and uh, stuff so yeah that's that's the uh, way we work we also provide the tools for enterprises and for like bigger guys uh, as a private cloud or multi-cloud installation uh, in this way, we provide like uh, full installation on premise, on your servers, or this can be installation on top of uh, infrastructure vendors like uh, uh, hyperscalers that uh, there are around the world. It depends on you because we are vend vendor agnostic in terms of infrastructure, but we tend to work with uh, local service providers like Kidora. Yeah. Uh, so and, uh, we Ricky, I have another question. If we plan to have to host Virtuoso server in US, at Idora, we focused on the European market, but we have many customers coming from US hosting on our platform uh, but and using CDN to have something strong around the world. Oh, this is one of the points. We don't plan now to have US uh, data center. Uh, the first one, because we have no local guys doing this for us. And in terms of uh, strategy, in terms of marketing, it costs a lot to cover both uh, both um, country and uh, and situation like this. But there is another, there is other uh, virtual application platform uh, partners directly on the on US, and they are nice. So depends of how you would like to work. But we have some customer coming from US. Just use application platform uh, partners and move to us because they want to have some DevOps consulting, managed services, and depends of who, which provider you would like to use, but they don't have the same services and the same level of services. Yes, and just just to add here, some customers and customers who are running projects like on Fedora or other service providers who are offering virtual application platform on top mm -hmm. of them, uh, they can run their project on several service providers because the look of the panel is the same. The experience, user experience is the same. So for them, this is not the task of learning totally new product, totally new uh, cloud platform every time when they deploy it in the United States or in Europe or in other country. And also the uh, uh, the set of functionality is pretty the same. It can be, uh, uh, it can vary, for instance, if uh, Matthew and Hidori decided to build some new 
add-on or something, he can do that. He can customize the spectrum of the marketplace applications that are offered. Uh, but uh, the main core functionality is uh, uh, the same pretty much on the on all the um, uh, service providers. The performance can differ because this depends on the uh, uh, on the servers and on the infrastructure. But the functionality of the platform is the same. That's why it's uh, uh, pretty uh, easy for the customers to distribute their project and to synchronize the project one hosted in Europe, the other one hosted in the United States, even if they are hosted on two different vendors, two different service providers. Yeah. Let, let okay. me answer to the anonymous uh, question. Uh, yeah. No, we don't do geo block uh, system, but when you make the registration on either our website, they ask you a phone number to make a SMS, to make a double authentication. And some countries are blocked by uh, the SMS. Don't worry, send an email to my to my support team, to the support at idora.io, and they will uh, create an account for you without any problem. And concerning the cloud scripting at the beginning, it, yes. Unfortunately, sorry, virtuoso guys, they didn't <laughs> do a good marketing of the cloud scripting, but cloud scripting is very mature and we use it every day. Uh, we have a lot of uh, customers we help them to make cloud scripting uh, pipeline CI and uh, very strong uh, infrastructure and complex. And uh, yes, cloud scripting is very, very strong. For example, we prepare uh, a lot of uh, cloud scripting for uh, ERP customer. They do a SaaS, but not a SaaS. To be honest, it's a uh, software application service as a service. They do uh, software as a service, but each and customer has a whole environment with the database because in Switzerland, we like to separate the, 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 the data of our customer. So they, they work like this. So each time they have a new customer that create automatically. So from their formulaire on their website, they create automatically an environment on our platform with the cloud scripting, with the, all the security and all the audits. We passed a lot of security audit for that. And it's really, really nice. To be honest, it's really, really nice. And you can do a lot because you can pass some uh, command line like Linux stuff. So you can do what you want with cloud scripting without any limitation. And if you have a limitation, we work a lot with Virtuoso team to improve it and had uh, IPI uh, request, CLI request to have something very strong. So yes, we, we work a, lit, uh, a lot with uh, Virtuoso team to improve it, to be the perfect uh, things. But unfortunately it's not uh, enough markets uh, the marketing doesn't yeah, work a yeah, lot will, on the class. I will add it. Yeah. <laughs> I will add it from marketing perspective. Yes, I'm a marketing yeah. person. I need to answer to that. Uh, cloud scripting <laughs> initially, it was created around five years ago at least, or maybe even more. Uh, and yeah. it was created as a uh, as internal tool. It was created for Virtuoso to build the packages, to to build the marketplace. Uh, uh, that's why it was not really the, the target was not to to spread it as the tool for everyone. Uh, later, we realized that the tool is pretty cool and it can, it is a strong uh, uh, tool that can be used by others. So we started to spread already the word across the service providers we are working with. And uh, the documentation, I, I've sent the link in the chat, the documentation is open. So basically anyone in the community, you can just see, read the documentation, build your own uh, uh, package, and uh, it will run uh, inside uh, the top application platform or any of the service providers, including Fedora. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty mature, uh, mature tool for, for the use. Yes, Good. And, and for example, you can create some application based on manifest, and that's pretty, pretty great. Uh, to, to, to be honest, you can uh, you can create some complex application. Let's discuss about a cluster, for example, sorry, cluster. Uh, um, let's discuss about, yeah, for example, a My MySQL, MyADB uh, cluster. You can select if you would like to have some primary, secondary, or if you want to have something like Galera cluster, and then you can have multi-region uh, Galera cluster based, in fact, on the cloud scripting. So you can do everything what's, uh, uh, everything you want. This small interface we see here is the same uh, as you can uh, script directly on your um, cloud scripting. And it's quite very, very interesting. For example, you can make some options and 
you can, yes, you can make some tick and that will active or not on your cloud scripting what you want. That's great. Yeah, it seems to me yeah. with the questions. Okay, is it a hard requirement to develop uh, the cloud scripting plugins in? No. Yes. <laughs> Alors, th there is some customer did uh, some uh, Python uh, plugins in GS. Uh, you, they did some uh, um, uh, GS for GCS plugins. You can do whatever you want. In fact, it's quite easy. To be honest, it's quite easy. We have a Go client in the same time, Python client. And yes, there is no, no limitation in, fact, in the GSS plugin because you have some request and call. Let's maybe share. Uh, uh, yes, let's discuss about, for example, the multi-region simple WordPress cluster. So this is what we would like. CDN, Let's Encrypt, Web Application Firewall, Lightspeed Web Server, Redis, and MyADB. It's on two regions. And then the manifest is quite easy to maintain. It's just, let's say, 200 lines. And you can do very what you want. It's, it's very, very interesting and very powerful. Unfortunately, yes, we need to improve it. Uh, but it's, no, we don't need to improve it. We need to, to sharing on, uh, on, on platform. If you have any question. Okay, it seems to me more or less we covered the questions and we have like three minutes till the end of the time that we have. So just in summary, uh, you can start already experiencing the full GitOps concept uh, at Hedora.io. Uh, you can register and get your account and try and play with everything that uh, Matthew was showing today, like all the functionality. Uh, that was presented is available there and you can see how it works for your company, for your project. Uh, and also if you're interested uh, in this kind of uh, services for your clients and you are a service provider, for instance, you can discuss the business opportunities with Virtuosa, get in touch with us and uh, we will see how we can help you as a service provider or if you need uh, on-premise installation for sure as well. Thank you, yes, Matthew. The... That was very insightful. Thanks to you. <laughs> and demonstration works fine so that's perfect <laughs> yes, <laughs> lot of yes. demonstration. So, thank you so much everybody for, for listening us and if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, either, our team, either our team we will be uh, very happy to, to help you on GitHub's philosophy DevOps or just virtual application platform the prime great thank, thank you so you. much thanks